Okay, folks, here it goes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Grace Slick. Happy birthday to you. And we're all going to celebrate by uh, watching a video off of this tape that started in shoot, May of 1996. So you can see how much slow I slowed in taping once those children got here. But uh, <laughs> almost a full two years later, Grace Slick is on The Late Late Show with Tom Snyder. Tom does a great interview. And she tells the Finch College White House dose in the tea story. Essential, Grace Slick. Happy birthday. Rock music in the 60s and 70s. As lead singer of Jefferson Airplane, she belted out such great hits as White Rabbit and Somebody to Love. And her brand new autobiography is called What Else? Somebody to Love. And it's a pleasure to welcome Grace Lick to our little show here. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Tom. You've had a couple of quiet years now out of the limelight, living in Malibu. Now you're back in the spotlight on the book tour. What is it like for you now? Weird. Yeah? Yeah, it, because it's uh, you're kind of this piece of an anachronistic meat that goes around and uh, re I represent something. It could be bad, it could be an era of looking something to people. You represent a very yeah. volatile time in recent history, the 60s. I never know what it's going to be to some people who are um, very upright, shall we say. I represent how not to do it. And to others, I rep represent how to do it. To some, they say, how, how the hell can she be alive? How's, why is this woman alive? And other people think... Like when you're well, signing books you know, and people come up to you, what, what do they say? What do they look for from you? Depends on the person. The, um, I've done it so far. It's been uh, a fairly broad demographic. But then you do get people who are uh, enamored, shall we say, sure. of the 60s. And they're still there. They're wearing the tie-dyed T-shirts. No kidding, really? And they bring all kinds of tchotchkes up, buttons that are 4,000 years old to sign or whatever it is, yeah. you know. And uh, so you get some people like that. And uh, that's an interesting thing. I imagine there were other eras people could get stuck in the Victorian era or people anywhere, you know. And what kind of feedback do you get from the folks at Jefferson Airplane or other people that you work through that may have worked with that may have read this book? Uh, it's been fairly positive. And uh, Paul Kantner said an interesting thing, which is uh, I called him up and told him of some response or other, and he said, well, you just remind everybody, it's like uh, Rashomon. You have one thing happening, seven different people watching it, you're going to get seven different stories. Mm -hmm. This one is yours. They want to tell their story, fine, let them go write a book. So he was kind of equanimous about the uh, situation. I told you before we started that I have a vacation home up in Marin County in the yeah. Tiburon area, okay? They're still talking about you with the shotgun. <laughs> what the hell happened up there that night? Well, what All they said was Grace Slick left town <laughs> after she pulled a shotgun on the Tiburon Police Department. <laughs> well, you know, it'd be uh, funnier if the firearms weren't involved. It, was a, it would be a comedy of errors if it weren't for the fact that there were gu guns involved. Uh, but I'd been robbed three times in uh, Mill Valley. So uh, the guy that was staying with me, um, whom I didn't know had a mental problem, went to answer the door, and it was late in the morning. I heard angry male voices, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, God, here we go again. Because I thought we were going to get robbed or some lunatics or something. I picked up the shotgun, and I went out there, and they, they had him down with the handcuffs. He's screaming, shoot me, and the cops have their guns drawn. I'm, what is going on here? Grace, put the shotgun down. Not until you tell me what's going on here. Grace, put the shotgun down. Not until... Finally, one of the cops rolled into me, which was a beautiful move. He couldn't have done anything better. It was just fabulous. Knocked me down, so that ends all the gun business. Yeah, right. But I didn't know that the guy had called them, and he sounded so goofy that the, the cops were coming up to protect me. And I didn't know that. I had no idea what was going on. Oh, so the guy on. was mentally imbalanced? The or... guy was not right in the head. Uh -huh. And he'd called and left an insane message on 911. And I guess they went, whoa, that's really goofy. Let's, because they knew where I, 
was staying. So they came up to protect me. I didn't know that. I had no idea. It was, it was just this yeah, you insane... You see, all I get is bits and pieces from friends I have up there about, you know, Grace pulled a shotgun on the Tiburon Police yeah. Department. I thought, you know, what the hell happened up there? No, that uh, particular officer got an award for doing that, and he should have. It was a real good move. And then what happened when they burned your house down? Didn't Marin County burn your house down? Well, Marin County burned the house down. They weren't... They didn't... Uh, have a planning commission meeting to do that I understand. or anything. <laughs> but there were, <laughs> although, <laughs> although, <laughs> but uh, there were uh, two guys, I think, down at the bottom of the hill where I live, putting up a sign, welding it, that said danger fire area. That'd be the sign they were putting up That's fire area. That's the sign yeah. they were putting up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With a and welding torch, yeah. With a welding torch. <laughs> In August. <laughs> In August. And uh, they did. <laughs> and they were apparently not watching the sparks. Uh, so that made it real easy for all state to come through like gangbusters. <laughs> made it real easy to get the uh, county of Marin to come through too. So, you know, it it's sad, but no beings were hurt. So, well, that's good. Yeah, all it is is stuff. Yeah, after all, you Miss know. Slick, I mean, we made a little mistake here. We were trying to protect the area from a fire, and we just happened to burn <laughs> your house down by mistake. You don't understand these things, don't you? You're not upset, are you, Miss Slick? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, too, could be somebody to love, even though I burned your house down, you know. <laughs> I let, Wait a minute. Everybody has to know this. There's a spittoon right down at the bottom of his chair. Maybe people who watch this show every single night know this. Does everybody know this? That yes, they do. There? Yeah, yeah. This is a good thing. So, in any event, did the uh, county <laughs> he's of... Not, he's not doing that at all. Did the county of Marin uh, compensate you for the house which had burned down? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. yeah. So, that battle has been... Yeah, there was no question about that one. I mean, it, there, there's no, no... You know, that one wasn't... Obs uh, you couldn't go, gee, I wonder... You know, it was pretty obvious. In this book, you write that of all the things that you've tried for fun in your life that can cause trouble, alcohol caused the most for you. Would that be a fair yeah. statement? Yes. Uh, alcohol, of all the drugs, or uh, food, or any other yeah, habit I may get, in, yeah. get into that I like, uh, is the most powerful. And it can turn you into a jerk faster than any other drug. Did I you start drinking of. early? It was pretty much the same uh, way all the rest of the kids did. It's on the weekends, you yeah. have some beer. Sometimes you have too much to drink, so did other people. So I didn't really uh, stand out from the crowd, I don't think, uh, until probably the 70s. And uh, usually we don't recognize uh, where we're fouling. Like a marriage can go on and on, and it's, ha and it's been over for a long time. Same thing. You don't recognize it until you really get slammed into a wall. But I'm so uh, much in denial that I can get slammed into a wall and say, okay, well, now we just put a little splint on that one and, uh, you know, we'll lay back for a while, yeah. take it easy for a while, and then, and then get nuts in about two years, we'd be okay. Return you know, to the playing field, right? Just, you know. <laughs> now, you grew up in a fairly straight home. Your, your, oh, your yeah. parents lived in San Francisco, yeah. right? And it was mm -hmm. a, a pretty straight home. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that on the way over here. It's like uh, uh, Dharma and Greg. Dharma, who is the whoopee and uh, hippie mm -hmm. kind of, comes from hippie parents. But I had the different thing, which is I'm the nut that came from straight parents. And people always wonder, how did you get here from there? But I think a lot of us did in the 60s, because we were looking at our parents had nice lives, but it was seriously boring. It was almost like you get married, and then you give up. You just stop, you know? Mm -hmm kind of keep on going. And uh, we'd read about other points in history. These right. days, do you appreciate now and again moments of boredom? I don't get bored real easy. But you know what I mean. Won't you, you, you know, your, your parents did not think that their lives were boring, even though you as their children may have thought so. Yeah. So now do you kind of appreciate every now and again the, 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 the quietude of the home in which you grew up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because it also allowed me, uh, the home in which I grew up, allowed me to develop imagination. Because we did not have television. They listened to one radio program called The Halls of Ivy with Ronald Coleman. Uh, you know, I mean, it was... So you develop your own imagination, which I did. Yeah. Things you want to do to Ronald Coleman and The Halls yeah. of Ivy. Let me pause here for the, uh, for the commercials. Grace Slick is the guest. Her book is called Somebody to Love. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Slick here is Doug on the toll-free in Chicago. Hi, Doug, and welcome to CBS Late Night. Hello. Hey, how 
How you doing, T? I'm okay. I'm okay, Doug. Thanks. I'm a long-time watcher, uh, first-time caller. Thank I you. I have a uh, question here for Grace. Okay. I want to know uh, what uh, the weirdest place uh, she has ever played is, and uh, what kind of show was it? Strange Venues. I think it was a uh, Meat Packers Country Club or some weird thing in the uh, Midwest. When we first started, they didn't have the venues for rock and roll, so we played anywhere we could plug in. Anywhere they had electricity, we'd play there. And could, would you ever play in front of a group of kids who weren't hip? You know what I mean? Who, who, who really didn't understand the music that you were doing, but yet they wanted to see you. Oh, yeah. We played for kids, I think it was in New Orleans, who, uh, or New Orleans, whichever way you want to pronounce it, had on corsages. I mean, we came in with the long hair and the beads and the, and the weirdness, <laughs> mini skirts and everything, and they had on long dresses, little corsages, and their hair done at long curls and everything. Sure. They had no clue what we were about. I think we were a freak show. You know, it's like hiring some uh, freaks from the circus, really, to to look at and go. What was wow, the, what you know? was the one? And I think it's I think you're right about it. In somebody loves me, where you're backstage with the microphone talking to all the rich people out front. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of the first. At least it was the first I'd ever had, which is a wireless uh, mic. Oh, there you go. Okay. And uh, somebody came up to me in the dressing room, which was either up a few floors or down a few. I forget what the configuration was, but. Uh, they came and said, here, this new wireless mic. And I thought, wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to start using it right now before we even go on. I'm going to greet the folks. And I knew it was a bunch of rich people who paid a certain amount of money to get performance, performances from um, a variety of acts each week or twice a month or whatever it is, the Whitney Museum. Women in furs, you know, lots of High jewelry and stuff crowd. like that. Right. So I started in on them, and I can't even say it. I mean, if we were on cable, I probably couldn't say what I said. I just started in on them because I knew who they were. And the band is just like, oh. I mean, you know, it's just <laughs> so bad. But I did have fun with it, though. Doug, I'm glad you called. I'm sorry. Hey, thanks for sending the uh, pictures through the airways for so long, bud. Okay, pal, take care. You too, bud. Bye-bye, bud. Bud, huh? <laughs> That's Bud. Bud dude. in Chicago, yeah. Okay, dude. Now, you went to uh, this, uh, this um, it's a finishing school, sort of, back in New York, uh, the, the Finch School. That's why I knew who was at the Whitney. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did Mom and Dad send you to the Finch to no, tie, tidy you up? that or? was my idea, because... If you go to Finch College, you don't have to really study hard. I mean, it's a finishing school. You learn how to pour tea. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to go to New York, but I didn't really have any way of supporting myself, and I didn't want to work. So the best thing to parents, gee, I want to go to Finch College in New York. So, oh, that's good, huh? You know, so it was an easy way of hanging out in New York for a year. Did your mother and father ever truly understand you? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you would think they wouldn't because they were sort of right wing, and uh, but they were very funny, very wry, sense of humor, sarcastic. Uh, my mother was a singer for a while, and um, my father's an investment banker. But yeah, I think they did. Good, good. And when you got to Finch, what was New York like for you? Was it everything you expected it to be? Was it terrific? Yeah, Finch is very closed up, so you only you have a limited experience. You kind of go out with Princeton boys, and you have to sign in with the and there's a house mother mm -hmm. and she's French, and you have when the boys come in to pick you up, you sit down. She has to meet them. You have little tea with little. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a very cloistered kind of thing. So New York, hanging out in Soho, uh-uh. I mean, I had no idea what Soho was. Uh, so it's it was very. Is a lot less interesting than I would have hoped. Now you tell the story. Uh, one of the Finch graduates, uh, an alumna, was Tricia Nixon. Yeah. And in the what was it in the White House when Mr. Nixon wanted to have this alumna dinner? Yeah, she was. Uh, um, Tricky Dick was in the White House, and she uh, apparently wanted to have a tea and invite all the alumni uh, from Finch. Now when I went to Finch, my name was Grace Wing. That's my maiden name. Mm -hmm. So that's who the invitation was sent to. And I got that in the mail. I thought, oh, they don't know. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Who would like to go to the White House and act like my husband more than anybody I know? Abby Hoffman. Oh, good. <laughs> so when we, we tried to straighten him out, make him look good, put a suit on him, slick back his hair, he looked like a hitman for the mafia. Yeah, yeah. So we're standing in line. The security comes up and says, I'm sorry, you can't go in. I said, I've got an invitation. So, no, you're a security risk. And, I, and they meant it. And they said, you're Grace Slick. You're, and they're right. Because I had 
about 600 mics of acid in my pocket, and I fully intended to stick it in uh, Richard Nixon's teacup. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spike the president? They didn't know why, yeah. but they were right. But I you was. wanted to send Mr. Nixon uh, on an adventure that he'd never taken before. And an event, yeah, and he, they would have had to take him to Langley and, you know, hide him out for a week and try to figure out what's wrong with him, and uh, <laughs> we, we fully intended to do that. So they were right. Uh -huh. So you never got into the party? No, and we left because we felt, okay, we're not getting in. And I learned this many years later, apparently Pat Nixon and Tricia uh, said, no, 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 go get them, it's okay, mm -hmm. they can come in. But it was too late. So, yeah. in the years that you were um, enjoying a cocktail, an adult beverage, an were, adult were, beverage, yeah. <laughs> were you ever stopped by? Were you ever stopped by the police DUI driving under the influence? Never in a car, though. No. No, I've never been in a car. It's it's a TUI, talking under the influence, but there isn't any such listening, uh, because I've always been at least fifty feet away from the car, but I always got hauled in because of I have a very bad attitude when people start telling me what to do and they have on uh, any kind of uniform. I mean, it could be a McDonald's uniform and I'd start. Is know? that right? Yeah. I like, what would you start up saying to people in uniform when they... Well, the... And if you weren't driving a car, what would be the difference if you, if you were under the influence? Why would they even bother you? Because they know I had been and would be in the car because it's my car. So they figured... Oh, so you would stop the car and get out? No. One time the, uh, there was smoke coming out under the hood. I thought the car was going to bl blow up, so I parked it. This is um, uh, Doyle, not Doyle Drive, uh, the Rainbow Tunnel, um, Marin County. Uh, uh, Highway 101, where it yeah. goes through the, the... Pulled over, I'm on the freeway, got out about 50 feet away from the car because I thought it was going to blow up. <clears throat> Volkswagen goes by, says she want me to get the Highway Patrol. I said, please. Highway Patrol comes back, guy gets out, huge stomach, 6'4", sticks his hands in his belt and says, okay, what's going on here? Now... He doesn't know I'm drunk yet. So wh why would you say that to a woman who's alone at 4 o'clock or 2 or whatever it was on a freeway with her car blowing up? What's going on here? So I said, I'm having a damn party in the middle of the... Ba da 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 okay. as if we were on cable, yes. And you go, <laughs> and you go right to jail. Now we kind of one. know how it went with the wireless microphone, don't we? So, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, and so I get hauled in for drunk, but I've never been in a car. Well, what was the time when you were with, they had the Ferrari and they wanted to see the motor? No, that's, that's Aston Martin. Or Aston Martin, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, uh, I was going about 120 miles an hour and the um, police were behind me and I just thought, okay, I've got a James Bond car, let's see if they can catch it. Because I knew, <laughs> I knew that the... Um, and you had enjoyed an adult beverage before you... No, oh, I hadn't. No, no this is... This sober is, is a I'm judge. Just nutty sober, too. Sober. So I thought, let's see if I can outrun these guys. And it was outrunning them, because I knew the cop cars were souped up, right? They were Dodges in those mm -hmm. days, I think. And uh, I thought, how souped up did they get? So I started, and it was by Soledad Prison, long straight away. So I'm out beating this guy, and I'm going, tee hee hee. I know the road, yeah, I know exactly and where And then, like. remember how that looked? Yep. Long straight. Yeah. Then way ahead, I see two black and whites. And they just stopped like that, right in the middle of the thing. And I thought, uh oh. And then, but they had never seen an Aston Martin, the engine in an Aston Martin. The guy said, I tell you what, I'll give you a ticket for 80 miles an hour if you let us look at the engine. <laughs> Be my guest. May I open the Pop that thing. And, and the cops all turn around. Oh, there's a 470, and it's right by the uh, 6470, you know. Great. Fabulous. Ticket for 80 miles an hour. I'm trying to think of the name of the tunnels on the, the Waldo tunnels. Yeah, Waldo Grade. Waldo Grade. Waldo Grade. It was right after the yeah, Waldo Grade. So, you know. Yeah, let's just look under the hood and we'll get you. We will continue <laughs> with Grace Slick. The book is called Somebody to Love, and we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> Flick, the author of uh, a brand new autobiography. Here is Susan on the toll free in Richmond, Virginia. Hi, Susan, and Hi, welcome to doing? CBS. Fine, thanks. How are you? Fine, thanks. <laughs> Good. Um, thanks for telling us about Goo Gone a while back. About what? Goo Gone. Oh, thank you. Have you tried Goo Gone? That was great. Yeah, it does work well with the goo, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate goo around the house, don't you, Susan? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> anyway, what's what's on your mind? What's on your mind, right, Susan? Besides um, that. <laughs> anything about Grace Slick's daughter in years. So she's obviously done a good job raising her, or it would be in the paper. So how is she? <laughs> either that, either that, or I haven't done a good job, and she ought to be in the paper, you know. <laughs> Who knows? Um, 
She's hanging back right now. She was doing some acting for a while, and she loves acting, but she's kind of going like that uh, about the business around it, which can be really cutthroat. So she's going to school right now and sort of taking it easy. We'll see what she does in a while. And uh, how, how is she like you or unlike you? Opinionated. Yeah. Uh, okay. She'll tell you what she thinks. Um, she doesn't have a problem making up her mind. Uh, sometimes that can be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it is for me, anyway. I, but I she's know. an adult now, right? She's yeah. in her 20s yeah, now. She's 20, 27. Okay. And uh, she's a fairly good entertainer. Uh, she's a much better actress uh, than I am or than Paul is. Paul's not a good actress. Uh, no, she, Paul, Paul is not a good actress. She's funny. I like her. I like her as a person. I mean, as well as loving. You can love your kids and uh, maybe, you know, you don't like them too much. But I also like her. She's fun to be mm -hmm. around. What was the, um, if this isn't too personal, the, the birth experience like for you when she was born? Uh, it was pretty much hideous because at the time I thought I'd like to have every drug known to man and the anesthetist did not show up. And I, I would, where is the kid? And they'd say, oh, we don't know. You just, you know. So I had natural childbirth, but it was not by choice. <laughs> I see. I would have liked spinal blocks and ear blocks and nose uh, thing, you know, everything you can get. And did you have a name picked up for, uh, picked out for the child, boy or girl? Well, I can't remember because we, I, we didn't have a sonogram. I can't remember what we uh, thought of for boy, for the life of me. Maybe Paul knows. Uh, but China, yes, I knew that if it was a girl, it's gonna be, we decided on mm -hmm. China. And, and, and by the way, Susan, thanks for calling and thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay, good bye night bye. now and luck with the, the goo gone. Oh, thanks. Okay, kid. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye now. It's a little in-house joke. I'm not even going to go there. No, it's a product. You know when you get glassware from the store and they have those little stickers on that you can never get off? You know, like glasses. Oh, packaging makes me nuts. Yeah, well, this, you just put goo gone on there and it comes right off and the glass is perfectly clear and crystal Right. Oh, well, that's, I'm, actually, I'm glad to know that. Yeah. That's good. In fact, we have, we'll give you a free sample good. when you leave. Thank you. Who gone, yeah. What, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what finally led you to leave the Bay Area and move to the Los Angeles? Well, you live in Malibu now. Yeah. Well, I figured uh, since China lives here, and I've always liked L.A., people in uh, Northern California get a little snobby about Los Angeles. And yep. a, lot of my, a lot of my friends, what do you, why are you moving to, you know, uh, but I like L.A. Uh, somebody said, as L.A. goes, so goes the world. That's a little frightening, but... <laughs> yes, it is. The world's in big trouble. <laughs> but see, Malibu, is, is that's right on the ocean, and it's just kind of a small community. So L.A. is so huge that you have all kinds of different communities. It isn't one thing. It's a whole bunch of different stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can say, I hate L.A. Well, which part do you hate? I love L.A. Which part, you know... It's, it's, mo it's a monster. So uh, not liking L.A., what do you mean you don't like L.A.? And, but do you ever get, do you go back up north from time to time? From to, time to time, To yeah. your home? Yeah, I'll be going up there next week. And do you go past where the house that burned down used to be and kind of look at it? Or? No, I haven't seen it. Uh, I've had, uh, China looked at it. She went up there and she said uh, it was interesting. I think they rebuilt on the property. Uh, but I haven't looked at that. No. In Mill Valley, right? Yeah. yeah. I never go there because I get lost every time I go to Mill Valley. Really? Yeah, I, I never make the right turn, and I can never find my way home again. That's weird, because it's Mill Valley's very simple, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> it's kind of, there's only two main streets. I know, but I, I have it. trouble with more than one, Grace. Okay. okay. Anyway, thanks for sharing your stories with us tonight. <laughs> it's good to see you again, my friend, and be Thank well. Thank you. Okay. Grace Slick is the guest, and the new autobiography out with a recent photo on the cover is called Somebody to Love. We'll be right back with Mary Stuart Masterson after these short messages. <laughs> Thank you for watching Cleveland Live Music. Don't worry, this cop that's approaching is not going to interrupt great uploads. He hopefully supports the channel as much as you folks who hit the subscribe button do. There's Patreon and GoFundMe information that I doubt he's going to do. You can. But subscribe. Keep watching. That's all that counts.